you know, it's a it's a pleasure for for me and my team to be here in Ghana mm. and welcome to thank you so much. Do you have a specific way to say welcome in in Ghana? Aquaba. I think Aquaba? you guys say the same thing in Abidjan, mm -hmm. no? In Abidjan, yes, yeah. they say Aquaba. Aquaba. I was surprised yeah. at the airport. I saw Aquaba. I'm yeah. like, oh, I mean, okay. we're the same people, really. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely agree. So thank you so uh -huh. much. No limit, as you know, it's this uh, Pan African project that puts a highlight into impactful international, but also African leaders such yeah. as you. Mm. Uh, so it's really a pleasure for us to be here today. Thank you very much, KOD. How can you tell me how did you land in? Uh, fashion design while you had a background in journalism in at the journalism. university? Um, I, I've always been a fashion person, you okay. know, I mean, okay. right from the onset when I started working on radio and, and, and television. Also, my mother sold fabrics as well, oh. like years ago, so. Yes. Um, I think my mom was, was a, 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 an inspiration in terms of, you know, Okay. the fashion aspect of my life. I see. But then again, um, you know, I've been doing about 20 years of, of media, radio and television, producing music as well, before um, um, getting into the fashion business. I got into yeah. the fashion business by accident. <laughs> I see. Um, and my wife thought, uh, you're a very fashionable person. Um, you... I can confirm it. Yeah, you're a very <laughs> fashionable person. Uh, people look up to you in terms of what you wear. Yeah. So why don't you go buy mm -hmm. a blueprint that already existed? Okay. Rockaway, who owns it? Jay-Z, Jay I guess. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, who owns owns Sean John? PDD. PDD. Yeah. They don't even sketch them. It says yes. there are names on them. But exactly. in my case, I actually sketch whatever um, 1957 produces. So. We decided to use that blueprint to establish 1957 and we thought to use a name that yeah. is very um, powerful, yeah. Ghana's independence year 1957, yeah. because um, um, our, our country's independence is one that resonates across the world. Everywhere you find yourself as a black person, yes. Ghana's independence has a connection to you I see. as a black person. So I chose to use that name as um, you know, uh, the name of the brand. That's very original. Mm, mm, mm. I'd like to know, how was the first encounter with the media? Media? That was a long time ago. I think mm. I was probably about seven years ago. Yes, old. That early? My, my mom, uh, my dad had a friend at GBC called um, Emilia Cromwell Adama. Yeah. She had a show, you know, for children on, yeah. on, on radio. And she invited me over. I went to see what they were doing there. And I was like, I'd want to do this when I grow up, <laughs> you know. And interestingly, I'm sure you guys experienced that in Abidjan as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, as African parents, they always want you to go up and become a doctor or, yeah, or, an or a lawyer. Or a lawyer. Yeah. But my mom saw a 360 oh. creative person in me and she didn't like it so much. You know, I yeah, yeah, because um, I mean, why would she waste her time, send me to school, and then I'd what, become what? An, an animateur, yes, as you guys yes, say in yes, French. Yes. You know, and. Uh, uh, I never looked back, you know, I, okay. I pursued what I wanted to do. Uh, I've done a bit of music production, yes. radio and TV, mm -hmm. but doing radio full time actually started in 1997. I think I was about 18 or 19 years okay. at Radio Gold and um, yeah. I did that for about 25 years. Took a break and went back only last year. Amazing. Mm. You were born in Wineba. Yeah. Hopefully I got the name right. Yeah, you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> How was your childhood? Uh, I had an amazing childhood. I was born mm. in Wineba. I was there for only two years. Mm. Um, my father worked as a, a prisons officer. So being in the security service, yes. you were transferred around. So I lived in Wineba for only two years. I don't remember anything from there. Growing up, oh. then went to Kumase, um, came to Accra, I think in 1982. Okay. And um, I've been in Accra since. You know, you talk uh, a lot about your mother. Yes, yes. What influence did she had on your career? I, everything, you know, even though she did not um, endorse what I wanted to become. Yes. She was my number one supporter, you know, like my biggest cheerleader. Her happiness if, is her happiness. Yeah, yeah, yes. eventually when um, she realized this is all I wanted to do. Yes. And I was also doing it quite well, you know, with that certain level of prominence mm -hmm. so um she she became my my number one cheerleader and um she's someone that 
stood behind me through yes. you know all the highs and lows. You know, fathers are yeah. always gone. Yeah, you know, the moms are the yeah, ones that are important. Are always, always on the ground, and yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I'm gone most of the time. So, my wife has that same relationship with my daughters, even though we're equally very close. But um, I think mothers are just yeah. awesome. Later on in your career, Radio Gold. Yes, Radio Gold was right from the onset. Okay. That was actually from get go in 1997. Mm. You know, um, I I did about everything on radio apart from sports because I'm not much of a sports person. So you know. So you don't watch the Black Stars when? Well, I I I watch the Black Stars. In actual yes. fact, I support only two teams: oh, the Black okay. Stars and Asante Kotoko because okay. of Ashanti. Okay. You know, but I, I did um, almost everything at Radio Gold apart mm. from uh, sports presentations. So you know, like music shows, doing the morning show, a bit of the politics, everything. Yeah, apart from sports. And I did that for, I think about 18 years wow. before leaving Radio Gold to join Star FM. Makes um, sense. I think I did Star FM for about two or three years. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, when I get into your shop and I look at you, my mm. question is, where do you get this test of elegance, of fashion? Where do you get inspired from? Well, I mean, as Africans, mm. you know, that's style and fashion and everything we do. I mean. Yes. You look around you from the sun to the ocean to the trees to the people, they inspire us in different ways, you know. And uh, uh, one of the things about 1957 is what we do is, is, is always tailor made for you. If you wear anything from this shop, you won't see another person wearing the same thing. Look around. Yes, you won't sir. see like three of the same thing replicated. Of course. We I really do that, you know. Agree. And we believe that everyone has their own individual, you know. Um, um, individuality, yes. and uh, we have to design clothes to, you know, suit what they represent. Today, you say that you're back uh, at the radio, mm. and how do you combine these two hats of well, being a fashionist and a journalist I, presenter? I um, decided not to do that full time, so okay. I have a once a week show on radio. I yeah. do that every Friday called Weekend Spectacular. Yes, Friday evening, and I spend the rest of the week concentrating yes. on 1957. I'm actually back in school. You know, okay. doing my masters as well um, <laughs> this very month of, of January. So I'm going to juggle being in school, working at 19.7 and also um, being on, on radio. But Let, Radio Go doesn't take a lot of my time. They don't. I see. Mm. Let's talk about Rhythms on the Runaway. Rhythms on the Runaway. Mm. Yes. How did that start? Rhythms on the Runaway started um, when my daughter, my first daughter was one year. We created a clothing line for my daughter called Ohe Markets Club. Mm. And, um, you know, we decided to have a fashion show with children and a couple of my musician friends, Ifia and Kwabina Kwabina, at a club in Accra called uh, Twist Night Club, you yeah. know, one of the biggest clubs in Ghana. Um, they were affiliated to a hotel called uh, Headlines Hospitality. Mm -hmm. Headlines actually saw the birth of Twist. So we had the events there, you know. For us, it was just a night, you know, friends, family, yeah. close allies seeing a fashion show and a music element to it. Then the second year, we went to Citizen Coffee. That's just two minutes from here. Okay. And it started growing. Mm -hmm. You know, we started after the, after the second one, mm -hmm. we started bringing on other designers from Ghana and from, you know, the African diaspora. Okay. And it's become, you know, what the BBC described as the biggest um, cultural expose in Africa. It's, it is. We, we celebrated our 10th year last year. And um, it's, it's, it's amazing. We've just grown yes. in leaps and bounds. All that I can wish you yeah. is to go and get mm, there and mm, keep on inspiring mm, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's really important. Exactly. How do you, how would you define the Ghanaian uh, entertainment industry when it comes to fashion, it comes to music, mm. production? How do you see that today? It's, it's, it's growing. And I mean, we've always been a focal point in, in Africa. You know, you've been in Ghana for some time now. I mean, look at December. Everyone is coming to Ghana. Everybody. Like in every country, everyone is yes. coming to Ghana in December. I have friends from Iran who come to Ghana. Mm. You know, and it's it's amazing. We, 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 we are very welcoming. That's our nature as a people. And um, one of the things I've been advocating in the last three years is, I'm sure you guys experienced that in Abidjan as well, in, like, in <laughs> Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. There's a lot more Nigerian music content True. on the airwaves. And which forced me to stop you yeah. with this question is, what's the real difference between 
the Nigerian music and the Ghanaian music? I mean, it's the same people. We're the same people. The only difference is that we have to be very intentional about projecting our own as well. I mean, I we can't play more Nigerian music yes, than yes. Ghanaian music. If people are coming to Ghana yeah. uh, to experience December in Ghana, mm -hmm. they call it Dirty December. Yes. They are going back with a few things. Memories from what they heard in the nightclubs, mm -hmm. the food they ate. Mm -hmm. They can't take it back with them, but then it's memories. <laughs> yes. They're going to take clothes from maybe 1957 or Definitely. any of the major brands. And um, uh, we can't do all these mm -hmm. and relegate the music aspect of it. So mm -hmm. I'm very big on projecting music, especially in December in, in Ghana. Sarkodie, yeah, Shatawale, Stone Boy. And, and, and they all had their shows yes. and they, they were exceptionally good. All of them, yes. you know, stood out. We're, 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 we're doing quite well. I mean, I think um, it's it's one of the best times for yes. us as a country from independence. Mm -hmm. We had some great times in the 70s when um, even the great fella lived in Ghana at a certain yes. point. Uh, we had musicians like Nana Tufo who went to play for King Sonia Day in, mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, Ghana's had a great relationship with my good friend, um, um, Freddie Mayway, who sees himself as a Ghanaian, you know? Yes. And uh, we've always been that, that beacon of hope not just politically, mm -hmm. but in every sphere of life. And um, that's what we represent as a people. Mm -hmm. It's important and amazing to mention that uh, you say that your dad was not always, the, you know, around when you mm -hmm. were growing up. Yeah, I mean, I understood because of work. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Today yeah. you are, you belong to the world out there. Yeah. Is it challenging in your intimacy in the house with your children, your kids? Well, you know, you have to wear... I believe that whatever you do in life, you yeah. have to do it to the best of your ability. You know? <laughs> and um, as a father, yeah. you, yes, my mom used to describe it as a, a public toy, what I do, you know, like everyone wants a bit of you. Yes. I mean, there are times my wife would go like, oh man, you're always gone. You know, <laughs> like, you're supporting everyone in the industry. And that's yes. what I do. I support yeah. everyone in the industry because when it's my turn, they all show up for me. Yes. And I believe in giving back. Yes. You know, but... When you're home, you have to play that role too very well. Mm. You have to be a father when you're mm. home. You know, you, you should find a way. Your, yes. your stardom or whatever you're seeing out there yes. ends <laughs> at the gate. You don't take it inside. Yes. You know, yeah. Yes. I mean, that's very important. You've been supporting people. And um, yesterday I saw a tweet of you. Mm. Of uh, there's this guy that came and built a school. Oh, yes. A free school. Yes. Free education. Free education. And I have goosebumps. I mean, yeah. Michael... Blacks and what Blackson, he's done yeah. is amazing. It's amazing. And I think uh, everyone who is giving so much reverence in this country, you know, and if they're not able to affect people like what this guy has done. Yes. I mean, he's Ghanaian. Everyone knows yes. that he's Ghanaian, but he doesn't even live yet. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. look at the, the, the building. It's, it's an amazing building. Exactly. For his people. It goes back to what you said about diaspora. Exactly. Coming back to yeah, coming build back our, to build. our yeah. own country. Yeah. And I mean, it's the essence of December in Ghana. Since yes. 2019, mm -hmm. all these guys are coming, you know, yes. reconnecting their roots to to Africa. And, and it's amazing what Michael Stan, mm -hmm. um, the fact that he's actually not charging a dime. I'm wondering how he's going to pay those fees. <laughs> but um, it's, it's a great thing. Inspiration. And also, it's something that I, I can connect with because my parents had a school. Okay. You know, my, my, my dad, when he retired, together with my mom, that's what they did. They built a school in, in Taifa. Uh, I sit on the board of that school. And if you could not afford to attend school, you got free education. Okay. You know, and when they died, we decided to reverse it because it's quite difficult to sustain yes. Yes. giving people free education. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's one of the reasons I had my own challenges when the whole country decided that we're going to give people free education. Like, how do we okay. sustain this? It's, it's a difficult thing to do. But um, Michael's, Michael's been incredible and um, kudos to him. Yes. Mm. So in your journey, what has been the most challenging situation that you've ever faced? I, I don't focus on challenges. I mean, they're part of life. You know, I believe in making mistakes and learning from them. Mm. I believe in making more mistakes and learning anew. Yes. You know, so um, I, I'm not the kind of person that focuses on, on, on challenges they come yeah you know they're part of the growing process yes a child learns to crawl they'll mm -hmm. fall a few times mm -hmm. um they learn to walk they'll yes. fall a few times yes and eventually you know they must start walking and they start running 
Yes. You know, so challenges are part of us. As I don't even focus. When, whenever I've been asked this question, I don't even focus. I don't even have anything to focus on. Like yes. think about a particular challenge that mm -hmm. I experience in life because they are they are just a, a passing wave. Mm. You know, when we landed at the airport, beside the Aquaba, mm. I noticed a guy wearing a shirt with the brand uh, 1957. Yes. For me, I thought it was uh, an international, like, worldwide, like coming from America, mm. a mm. designer in mm. Paris. Mm. But I, lear I learned to find out that yeah. you're the man behind mm. it. Mm. Congratulations to Thank you, you, first of all. Thank you. It's <laughs> amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. It's the story that we want to put out there yes. that we can also yes, of have our own and of course. put it of out course. there. Of course. So I how mean, did I start it? 1957 is a conversation starter. Okay. It's a conversation starter. A friend of mine, um, Kwe Kuti, yeah. who was uh, a media personality and also a musician, mm. was going into the Big Brother Africa house. And um, he wanted me to make something for him. Mm. As, you know, then I didn't even have 19.7 as a band. It was more of a, oh, Charlie, get somebody to sketch something for me, mm -hmm. you know, make a few things for me to go into the Big Brother house. Uh, I called this tailor friend of mine, Nima, a suburb of Accra, mm -hmm. you know, sat down with him, made those things for him. And um, that is what really saw the birth of, of 19.7. Where'd you get the name, 19.7? It is Ghana's Independence Year. Ah. Yeah, Ghana's independence year is 1957. And like I, I said earlier, it's one that resonates everywhere you find yourself as a black person. Yes. It's a very significant um, um, year in, in our life uh, as a people. So I thought, well, I mean, the great Kwame Nkrumah decided to liberate not just Ghana, but mm. the entire Africa. Africa, of course. Politically. Of course. So we're using yes. fashion to also, you know, exactly. do the same thing. We're liberating the African mind in a fashion way. It's important when you talk about Kwame Krumah. Yeah. We mentioned different names like Lumumba, yes. also from Congo. Yes. And we carry that legacy and apply it in different domains. Yes, of course. And we are today attached to our roots yeah, African. Course, yes, look at you dressing, look at mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. How do you see Africa today compared to 1997? 97. What has been 1957 the or 19, 1997? No, I'll say 1997 when you really started, like... Uh, I mean, it's been a story dreaming. of it's been a story of growth, mm. you know, um, across the continent. Uh, when COVID struck, I thought it was going to be our biggest break mm -hmm. as a continent because, you know, Africa was. I mean, we experienced it obviously, but the West struggled more. And I was wondering if it was going to be an opportunity for our leaders to realize that yeah. this yes. is when we'd have like a solid. Exactly. Intracontinental trade. Yes. And forget about the rest of the world. Focus on us. Unified like the us. Chinese did. Mm. You know, they didn't think about the rest of the world. They focused on themselves and see what China has become. Yes. And um, South Africa struggled a bit with COVID. You know, the number of people who died in that country. Uh, we lost some people. But continentally, I think that we were okay yes. compared to other places. And I saw it as a great opportunity for us to um, think Africa first, mm. enhance intra-African trade, and forget about all these unnecessary barriers, you know, amongst ourselves. Yes, if we want yes. to go and sell in Abidjan, yes, True. we're going there to sell. No border struggle no with um, visa immigration, all us. these yes. nonsense. Like, what's, what's yes. that about? You know, <laughs> let's just um, enhance mm -hmm. what our founding fathers wanted for this continent. Exactly. They wanted a united front and that's 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 what but somehow you know between 1997 and now it's it's been a story of progress yes. unfortunately sometimes mm. you know uh would see civil strife in certain countries but i uh, if we're able to overcome those things i think this is the greatest place to be on earth you know you are great and strong pan-african mm. how do you implement that in your day-to-day -day activities you know, we started having that conversation about 1997 yes, now. Yes. My mood changed. Yes. I noticed it. Yes. It, it takes me to another level. Yes. And I think that with what I do at 1957 with the clothing brand, it's a pan-African brand. Yes. Um, there's not been a single time that I've had a conversation with people anywhere in the world that my pan-African element yes. doesn't come. 
play. It's always part of it. You know, um, Pan-Africanism connected to it. It's yes, just, yeah. I become very passionate about it. Yes. You know, I, I think that um, we're very special people. Mm -hmm. We have um, so much that we don't even realize. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, one of our challenges as a continent has been that of leadership. Yes. We're only supposed to get better. If you look at the people who led this continent right from the onset, you know, the great Kwame Nkrumah, mm -hmm. um, you know, most of them were not even 50 years. Mm -hmm. They were in their, well, maybe like early 40s. Mm -hmm. Amazing visionaries who believed that this continent had the potential of taking care of its own. Yes. You know, so yes. we don't have an excuse now with how advanced the world has become. Yes. In terms of technology. Mm -hmm. We're only supposed to empower the African mind, you know, to know that uh, this is all we have. We can't sell all our resources. Yeah. We can't give all our resources to mm -hmm. the West mm -hmm. and not empower our own. We should be very intentional about empowering our own. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if the government in Nigeria decides to empower someone like Dangote mm -hmm. and make him very resourceful, He's employing Nigerians. His money stays in Nigeria. Nigeria. Even if he decides to buy houses outside, mm -hmm. majority of his wealth is going to be experienced and it's going to touch many souls within Nigeria. And it's not just in Nigeria. I mean, mm -hmm. Dangote is very prominent in Ghana. Yes. And that's what the African story ought to be. You know, once we empower our own, it's, it's, it's going to trickle down, mm -hmm. not just in individual countries, but across the continent. I mean, at 1957, yes, it's a money-making business, of course. Mm -hmm. But then we sell in Abidjan. Mm -hmm. We um, sell in South Africa. We sell globally. But for us, the African continent is one that is so capable yes. of taking care of its own. I mean, look at the number of countries we have. Look at the population of this continent. Yes. You know, so for me, um, when the African conversation starts, I, I get very passionate. What will be, <clears throat> in closing... What will be the ideal Africa for you? The ideal Africa for me is one that has people being very confident, people yes. knowing that this is all we have and we have to strive and do everything to yes. maintain yes. and enhance, you know, ourselves I as agree. a people yeah. and across the continent. Everyone working outside should have that zeal to decide that, hey, uh, we're going back home, like around 2002 when President Kufo was in, in office, there were quite a number of people who had graduated from outside Ghanaians who came back home to find jobs here. It was okay. a great time for us as a people. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was a very special moment for us as a country, you know, realizing that there was endless potential in Ghana and that potential should not just be in Ghana, it should be something that spreads across the continent. Yes. You know, and um, this is the place to be. It's the greatest place to be on Earth, Africa. Africa is the greatest place to be. That'll be all for us. Yeah. I would love to continue the conversation. Mm. Probably we'll mm. open more chapters yeah. when we talk about yeah. Africans mm. and what we can mm. offer mm. to the world. Yeah. And But first of all, we need to be unified, yes, we stronger, have to. Yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that might not happen because, you know, a very strong Africa would... Yeah would affect the West in a, in a negative <laughs> way. They like to micromanage how things yes. work yes. around here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, African Union, for instance, mm -hmm. if Ghana needs funds, yes. I believe the African Union should take care of it. We should not be going to Definitely. the World Bank. Definitely. You know, we should be capable of taking care of our mm -hmm. own, like African bank that takes care of African nations yes. when they are in debt, yes. when things are not going well for them. You're totally right. It's uh, it's so passionate, like you say, when we talk about Africa, and this is what we love. Yeah. And I guess today we had the opportunity to host you in this platform, No Limits, that puts a highlight into mm. impactful mm. Africans, but also international, yeah. like Michael Blackston from the diaspora, yeah. who were born here, yeah. but went there. Yeah. So it's a mix of it. Mm. And uh, thank you so much for Thank you very much indeed this for having it. Amazing and lovely yeah. conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. As you know, I'll be closing by saying that when you've been asking life to do a job, make sure 
be sure to come out with something that is extraordinary. Don't be just a regular guy, otherwise it's useless because all we want is to be extraordinary. And we'll keep I'll see you next on the episode of Money Myth.